Locked and loaded, off and running on this Friday, a twilight Friday here at Gulfstream Park. So good to have your company and glad you're coming along for the ride, everybody. Ron Nicoletti, Jason Blewett, catching up with you live on this Friday edition of Gulfstream Today from our clubhouse studios. We're hitting double digits in the month of August. It's August 10th, and uh, how about Gunavera coming back off the layoff? Yeah, very excited to see how Gunavera runs this afternoon. It'll be in race number four, so just add some intrigue to today's racing. And uh, yesterday, they got the Rainbow Six again. Indeed, they did six singles heading into that Thursday night cap, and in the end, a seven to two shot. Are you talking to me? Wound up getting the victory there, and that means, well, we paid it out yesterday for about $86,000. Not as big as the near three quarters of a mil from last Friday's card, but we have some sharp handicappers betting Gulfstream on a daily basis, and congratulations. If you were right maybe once yesterday, you got you got paid. It was yeah. that kind of a card, Ronnie. We saw some good prices. Now turning the page and coming up uh, as the uh, the plot thickens, we've got a lot going on today on this uh, Friday, August 10th at Gulfstream Park, including a carryover in uh, the Super High Five that'll get underway in race number one this afternoon. Twenty four hundred dollars and change, and of course the fifty cent early pick five gets underway there as well. Yeah, I got a big field of eleven runners in the first, so uh, got to figure it out. And I've also we got. The uh, Rainbow Six now starting anew. It is going to start in race number five. And uh, these things, uh, they're going to have $50,000 probably in it today. So it's still a good wager for only 20 cents. And the 50 cent late pick five gets underway. And the first half of this card with Gunavera coming back in race number four and even two dare in race number two might be on the chalky side, but things may open up uh, quite extensively if they do indeed chalk out early in the late pick five, which will start in race number six. So without further ado, We'll get things underway on this fast and firm Twilight Friday, August 10th, and we'll dive into that early pick five. And, man, I'm not going to just use horses just to not single a couple of favorites that are supposed to win today, the first being the Ralph Nix train two dare in race number two, who's eligible for that lower-level starter allowance and just looks really good in that spot, just looks like the fastest horse. And I get Gunavera hasn't run since the end of March in the Dubai World Cup, and they have bigger fish to fry uh, uh, Antonio's on the record of using this race as a prep and a springboard to the Woodward Labor Day weekend up in Saratoga Springs. But Gunavera is supposed to beat that field this afternoon, and it's good to have him back. I like in race number five as well, Ronnie. Who'd you take there? Because I think Subfactum is sitting on a big race. I got Subfactum on my ticket. I went three deep in there for my Rainbow Six, but I, I put the two Our Baby Driver on top of my ticket along with Don Fager. Don Fager in there, all right. Mm -hmm. Our Baby Driver and Don Fager, one, two for Ronnie in race number five and just an eight dollar early pick five play hopefully we could take it down for a couple of bucks we see a good safe return out of Gunavera, and then we'll invest with whatever we win into the late pick five and perhaps rainbow six on this august the 10th so we begin and talk about race number one and as it stands it's a a busy uh, early portion to the uh, friday program for trainer antonio sano who of course has the big horse coming up in the fourth but antonio also have has horses running in the first and the third and he may arguably have the horse to beat in the uh, first race in the number 10 hardened who we put second. I do like this horse cutting back to five eights. I think he's just a better horse going shorter on the turf. Yeah, I'm going to show you a stat on Mr. Antonio Sano on Harden, a route to sprint, claim is on the turf. He's solid, a big sample in 17 percent. He's into money 32 percent of the time. I like the fact that he's got a positive return of investment. But as you mentioned, Jason, both you and I did use the number three, Marky Moon. Pierre's ready to notch this two lifetime condition, followed that 12-5 maiden score, goes back, duels and weakens, finished third uh, last time 
timeout. And I just thought those were the two logical horses in that particular race. And it does appear beneath Miguel Vasquez on the three marquee moon that he may pull a great trip in this race, perhaps tracking the number two Crimson Spade, who's got some speed, and the uh, number seven horse, Uncle Runt. And it looks like the outfit has already come in on Uncle Runt. <laughs> There's not much money in the pool, but that horse going out for an operation that does like to bet a couple of bucks here and there. <laughs> and you're likely getting some speed. And I think Marquee Moon may quite simply trip out in that Friday first. Let's move on to the second here. Our first real big favorite on this uh, August 10th program as we move on to this uh, dirt opener. We start the action on the main going that mile with this three and up starter optional claimer. And Two Dare is eligible for this race, having run in a starter allowance for 7,500 last uh, Halloween weekend up in Maryland, and you get a sense that, boy, a lot's going to have to happen, including to Dare not showing up at all for him not to beat this field where he's just flat out faster. Well, they must have had a little bit of a party when they didn't see Kunane in the entry the last couple of days. This is the logical one to beat in here, primed and ready to score, return from that layoff. As I mentioned, finished second to Kunane. We'll show you a stat on Mr. Ralph Nix. A little bit of a cautionary tale. Second start after the layoff and optional claiming ranks on the dirt. He's only 5 for 35, 14%. It's in the money over 50% of the time, but a paltry return of investment of only 93 cents. So just something to point out there. But with that said, Two Dare is absolutely the one to be. He's just faced eons better on a consistent uh, basis and looks very well spotted here uh, to pick up the lion's share of a near $30,000 purse at around two to five or so in race number two. Let's move on to the third. We uh, stay on the main track, but we cut back in distance, going six furlongs with this three and up two lifetime, 12500 dollar uh, claiming race. You could take out the horse on the outside. That leaves us with a field of seven and a race where maybe my first glance run through a couple of days ago I was a little hard on the four Katana's Edge. I originally thought there wasn't a clear favorite in this race. However if this horse runs anywhere near <laughs> anywhere in the ballpark and zip code of his debut win here on Summit of Speed Day. Race 14 back on Saturday, June the 30th. He's probably going to win and you like him as he takes a big drop. Yeah, it takes the big drop to the 12-5 level. He followed that really solid debut. That was at the $10,000 level. He comes back, he breaks slow, he's six, but that's a really seasoned group of 16 optional claimers last time out. You got Social Roy, Color Me Pom Pom. These are multiple winners, hard-knocking campaigners. I just thought on the drop, they took a chance, they stepped it up last time out, and that was my thought process there. Luis Castillo will be in the saddle this afternoon. Now, Zaroma breaks one inside of Katana's Edge, and this is a horse who perhaps is starting to put things together and this is the second sort of key starter early on today for trainer Antonio Sano. And we'll learn a bit more about where this cult, who's by a champagne and a Belmont Stakes winner in Union Rag stands. And here is Aroma last time out back on that Saturday card that's been talked about uh, quite often here on this show over the last week and change. That was Saturday, July 21st. You watch how Zaroma runs. And do note, the horse of the yellow, who's basically in the two path or so right now, is Subfactum, who <laughs> really pulled a tough trip considering this was a track very much tilted towards the outside. And I do think even though Zeroma ran well in the context of this race, he was very much with the grain of an outside track. Subfactum, meanwhile, who was no match for the winner, did run well to finish a clear-cut second. And I like him returning in today's fifth race as the likely favorite. Well, Zeroma there, you know, rode the bias to that victory last time out. No match for Katana's Edge last time out. I don't know how you put that into, into your handicap. But that was my reasoning for the four Katana's Edge. Scotus Care and Time Will Tell on my ticket along with those. And I know you went to the inside with Game Day Drama. I was hoping, my thinking in Game Day Drama is maybe you get a horse who, much like Zaroma, is starting to improve and slowly put things together. And I view his July 7th win here about a month ago for trainer Juan Arias as hands down the best race of his career. And perhaps not a coincidence, it was also his first start for the barn with Ray Lou Gutierrez up in the iron. So maybe you get a horse who who trips out in this race. You get a favorite who's a little underlaid off the big fig, two back with Katana's edge. And I'm going to try to shake things up a little bit, Ronnie, in race number three. We do know, though, that a good <laughs> horse can come from anywhere. I love that saying, and it's certainly appropriate with Gunnavera returning today. We'll learn a bit more about where Gunny's been and what's on tap as we check out our little feature on the big horse. Castellano moving clear. Gunavera for local trainer Antonio Sano. Romps in the fountain of youth.
Gunavera has faced the world's best dirt horses on racing's biggest stages. His overachieving nature and blue collar roots have made him a fan favorite. The masses, of course, have always loved an underdog. And this former $16,000 yearling, who has banked nearly $3 million under the care of trainer Antonio Sano, has usually played the underdog's role. For me, it's very important. I'm proud for me and my family, the horse, uh, the owner, all people, that my team is never in my life the, the same horse for trainer. Horse and I don't have the words for just playing the. Gunavera has raced just twice this year. His campaign began with a hefty seven-figure payday in Gulfstream's $16 million Pegasus World Cup. Things, however, were far less smooth for the cult while many miles from home in the March 31st Dubai World Cup. Gunavera injured his right front hoof during the World Cup and finished a non-threatening eighth behind the upset winning Thunder Snow. The injury prompted some time away from the track, says Alex Sano, Antonio's son, an assistant trainer. Right after Dubai, we sent him uh, to Mount Tuokala in uh, Sabana Farm, where he stood there and uh, between the stall and his paddock, and we were more than anything, let him recover himself medically from the hoof issue that he had from the race. Gunavera returned to the work tab at his Gulfstream Park West base on June 23rd. He's been as steady as steady goes since then, breezing every seven to 10 days under the watchful eye of Sano. Have him um, jogging and galloping for a couple days before starting the breezing process. And he demonstrated to us that he was very tight in the track. A couple of breezes he did it very easy by himself. And then a couple of weeks ago, he did a bullet breeze. And he did an awesome, very good gallop pad. And we're very happy with his performance and how he's coming back right now. The Big Chestnut Colt will race Friday, August 10th at Gulfstream Park. A strong return will springboard Gunnavera back to Saratoga Racecourse for the Woodward Stakes Labor Day weekend. Yes, we're using basically the race here in August as a prep for Saratoga. Uh, people in Saratoga treat us very well every time we go there. Uh, Gunnavera, other than the fact that he loves to travel over there with a first and a second and a grade two and a grade one, we're very confident that he can perform well over there. The stake is not going to be a very, it's going to be a hard race basically. But he's hopefully going to be doing good, and this race here is going to show us a lot about him. Here's hoping the second half of Gunavera's four-year-old campaign is a big one. He's a fan favorite. I almost forgot, Ronnie, how beloved Gunavera is until that feature came out a few days ago, and our own uh, Meg Griffin helped me <laughs> put it together. She did a great job, mm -hmm. and thank you to the Sanos for being so accommodating and gracious. But everybody loves Gunavera, <laughs> and uh, looking forward to seeing him race today. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun to see him come back, and uh, he's he's our horse. That's the best way to explain, explain it, even though he goes up to Saratoga and kicks some butt up there. Well, he did win the Saratoga <laughs> Special at two already, two years ago and was second behind West Coast who of course would be three-year-old champion in last year's Traverse Stakes and we figured we'd go back in the archive and show an oldie but a goodie with Gunavera because the stakes at hand are very similar to the victory last August in the Tangelo Stakes. Now this wound up being a prep for the Travers locally after uh, failed attempts and runs in the Kentucky Derby in the Preakness and look if Gunavera returns and even if he's 80 85 percent again they're not going to go all in today you would think with the woodward and of course some major grade one stakes throughout the rest of 2018 but a gun of era sitting at 80 percent out of 100 is supposed to be too good for the field and he that was coming off a bit of a layoff in the tangelo so yep. he ran exceptionally well in that particular race but we do have Exector and Trifecta wagering in this. And I, the horse I used in second in there was a horse called Asterisk, who's making his first start since the crushing a field of 16 optional claimers at the distance that was during June. I want to show you a stand of Mr. Stanley Gold, a winner last out, layoff of 31 to 61 days on the dirt. He's solid. He's 9 for 39, 23%. He's in the money 77% of the time. He's got that dollar forty-eight return of investment. So Gunavera, Asterisk, look like the logical two to me in this race. Of course, Gunavera. Univera looks like the one to be. And you've got the Chilean bred Laetone, yeah. we'll see how he runs. A private buy for Dean Reeves and uh, Randy Hill uh, after this horse uh, did some good.
good things, was uh, a Group 1 winner in his native uh, Chile, and you do get a, uh, a feel or at least a, um, a point of comparison with him running second. Well beaten, but second nonetheless behind Wildcat, who recently ran for Chad Brown, was second in the Shuvi up at Saratoga. She is, of course, a, a filly or a mare. I'm not sure if she's five or four, but she's a good horse, and uh, Leotone danced some good dances behind Wildcat, again, in his native country. But all eyes will be on Gunavera at a, at a prohibitive favorite in race four. So we say welcome back to the big gunny. Let's move on to race number five, my friend. Speaking of big, why not take down this rainbow six, my friend? Somebody again hit it. A jackpot winner yesterday for just under 90,000 bucks. We start anew, and how do you see it, Ronnie? Well, I got a $28.80 ticket, and you see I have a single in there, race number nine, and that is the seven Darwish going for its third victory in a row for Gilberto Zerper, who's just a monster with uh, winning consecutive races, about 40%. But the horse I want to just point out, it comes in race number six, and that's the two, Rahi Momenta, I think eight or ten to one on the morning line. This is my long shot today. Really like the way this horse ran on the main track last time out. I see some speed. In there. I think maybe this horse could carve out a trip at five furlongs. This horse is in the money five for ten at that abbreviated distance. So that's my long shot in there. A and an affordable $28.80 ticket because, as you mentioned, they hit it for 90, <laughs> just about 90 large yesterday. And even the late pick five yeah. paid almost 50000 <laughs> It underscores how difficult, wide open, and deep these races are on a daily basis this time of year at Gulfstream Park. And we don't miss a beat in the first race. I mean, you have got a max out field of 12 with about 50 minutes give or take before post time and this opening leg of the rainbow six has got eight horses including sub factum who i like in here short price aside and normally this is not the kind of horse i'm going to go to a horse that's lost repeatedly and routinely for this ten thousand dollar made and claiming tag and was beaten at nine to five last time out to boot however the linchpin and the kicker for me is this is a horse that was really bias compromised on july 21st i'm going to take him to score but eat dick war and you're going a couple of posts inside of my top pick with our baby driver whose first time out for Georgina Baxter. Yeah, and, and some fact, I, I, I understand what you're saying. The barn has just been so cold that I, I wanted to watch mm -hmm. one. I mean, I used it on my ticket, as you just saw. I also used that tool, as you mentioned, our baby driver. Now in the Georgina Baxter barn. This is a son of overdriven. He's facing these 10 maidens on the dirt. At first outing, he dueled for the lead, and, and he weakened his fifth against seven and going seven and a half on the turf. Blinkers off for the return. Thought he was a logical contender along with Don Fager and of course sub factum on my ticket. All right, five down, five to go, halfway home on this live edition on a Twilight Friday at Gulfstream today. Let's move on to the second half of the program, race number six. Speaking of big fields, you've got 11 in the opening leg of the late pick five. And unlike some of the races earlier today, you're not dealing with a super short price favorite, at least as far as this opening leg goes. I went three deep. I didn't know which way to go. Obviously, <laughs> Ronnie's got some interest in, uh, in Rahi Momenta, who will be a pretty good price. The single for me, though, is Yakut in race seven. Do you like that horse yeah, at all? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, tough trip last time out, blowing the break, rushing up, and it's it's a drop to me that that makes sense. Getting Gaffleon as well, probably a little over bed in race number seven, but if you can get a little lucky uh, for not that much money, in this case just eighteen bucks, maybe we can uh, take down this uh, late pick five for uh, for a few hundred with Yakut as the uh, the anchor. Gorbachev, in the meantime, going to be a clear favorite in race number ten. It's really though, to be fair, Ronnie, a, a good size field on the turf or not, Gorbachev and everybody else, right? Yeah, I listed as a Galdi free falls to the 12-5 level. He didn't run too bad. He was in tight quarters last time out. It's the logical spot for that horse. I used another horse near Warpipe. I just thought that horse ran okay. Mm -hmm. and wanted a little bit of coverage in there. But you did go deeper in the ninth race where I singled the number seven. So that was my only basic difference in this ticket. I used Victor Barboza, who's on the rail. I also have Elizabeth Dobles, who quietly last weekend, I think she either won two, two or two. perhaps three. Yeah, the and back-to-back good prices as well. The right. Neb on uh, Saturday's Florida Sire Stakes program, and she had another good price winner the day before, and that might be a barn uh, that's just about to start uh, heating up. She does a great job, and Elizabeth, of course, a former assistant to Jeremiah Engelhardt, who's doing some good work way north of us in Saratoga Springs. So what's the story here with the number two, Rahi Momenta, who does get the weight off, that's for sure, yeah. with the 10-pound buck? Well, we're returning to the turf. I mentioned uh, when I was telling you about my ticket, five for ten and a money at this five 
five for long distance. I thought it was a really solid effort on the dirt in which she had to steady behind horses coming up to the quarter pole. I mean, she really had to steady in there. Then she splits rivals in the stretch and finishes second last time out. I'm looking for a price there. You mentioned the 10-pound apprentice, Kevin Carmona, Alexis Cordero Lopez, the trainer. I just thought that this horse, if you go back and look at this turf races at five furlongs, was right there. I think with a clean trip, maybe this one can spring a little bit of an upset, and that was my thought process. You're near the inside. I'm towards the outside, the nine wishfully, who probably, at least I'm banking on the fact that, and she is who she is. I mean, she's a, a low-level, two-lifetime claimer, but I'm banking on the fact that I believe she's going to improve here and get back to one of her better races, if not the best race she's ever run on the turf, coming off a bit of a layoff that basically dates back to the week after the Preakness. I like the fact that they gave her a little time to uh, breathe, a little R&R &R away from the work tab and the track, and she's back today in a good spot where there's just nobody to really hang your hat on in terms of a super short price. And I believe that horse is like 8 to 1 in the morning long along with us. So the, the, the thought is that this is a place where so I think and you think yeah. someone with a little bit of a price could win this race. It's not as easy as 1, 2, 3. Yeah, look at our super. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. So that's the kind of race it is, and that's usually where I try and find a long shot. All right, let's move on to the seventh here. We'll see if Ronnie's got any more prices for us. However, that'll have to wait at least another race because... Uh, this 6250 beaten claimer on the dirt at six and a half furlongs will have a real favorite in the number nine, Yakut, who looked okay winning here off the layoff back in late June and then came back and was just quite simply over her head. Didn't run all that bad, all things considered, back on July 19th, a race we will uh, bring you in a, a bad break. You hear that, that the inside sprinting on the dirt is a tough place to begin, and she was just off a little bit slowly, had that minor, it wasn't a drastic sort of leap in the air, but she hopped forward, and that cost her some time and some position. In the end, she just has got to do a little too much early on, rushing up on the inside. You combine the bad break, the rush up, with the fact that she was just a about 10 to 1 against a significantly better field. You have those two together with Tyler taking the call today, and she just seems like a very, very likely winner at a short price. Yeah, I mean, the drop to the 6,250 level is certainly uh, what caught my eye. Looks like the one to beat. Now, we both use high and lady in second. Sharp two lifetime winner, and it's six and a half for a long uh, distance. That was at six and a half. A couple of starts back. That was on that good track. Stretches out, finished fifth as the favorite. Behind a couple of next out winners, so I thought that was the logical second choice. But the race certainly goes through Yakut. And a major scratch as we flip the page and start to head down the home stretch here. We've talked about seven. We have just three more remaining on this Twilight Friday here at Gulfstream Park. Stepping up in class with these Florida breads on the turf in this allowance optional claimer. But a big scratch of the one hot and heavy. <laughs> you lose a bit of speed with hot and heavy no longer running this afternoon. However, it does appear a race just as far as I think overall a Ability goes. I won't fault anybody because I'm in the camp, and clearly you are as well. That feel as though the five salsa jack, who's been great of late off the claim for Juan Arriagada, who picked up yet another win yesterday and quietly has done a great job this summer, but that the five salsa jack and the seven first spring in from Kentucky might just be a on a different level with their overall, just their overall talent against this field. Yeah, and I was sort of looking for a new face in here. I thought salsa jack and, as you mentioned, first spring were the logical ones. And first spring listed as gelding. Debuts locally from Mark Cassie's barn after following its maiden score. Goes back, chases weakened, sixth place finish. That was entry level allowance runners going a mile on the Churchill turf. It's got to prove this horse has got to prove it could run here well. And, and we talked about this before we came in the year. I, I'm sort of leaning towards Salsa Jack as maybe the one to beat in here. I got the seven, five. I think those are the logical two. And I do like that the seven first spring is handy, can be up close to the pace. Again, the pace quite different from the race that was drawn that had the speedy hot and heavy from the rail. And I also like that Mark Cassie's South Florida contingent and operation has already worked this gelding three times up at Palm Meadows. Give him a little, little time to get acclimated to South Florida here in the summertime. Take it from me. You need a little time to get adjusted and we expect a good effort out of the seven first spring against Salsa Jack. Nice little matchup on the turf in race number eight. Race number nine as we uh, head on to the final dirt race on this August 10th here at Gulfstream. Third to $25,000. Three and up claimers are set to battle here. And you have, I think, the horse to beat the seven, Darwish, who's just a neck shy of being a perfect three for three. Well drawn, and boy, 
these connections. We know they know how to win. Yeah, let's show you a stat on Gilberto Zerpa. Winner last out in sprints. Claimers on the dirt. He's 19 for 49. That's 39 percent. He's in the money 69 percent of the time. Almost an even return of investment of a dollar and 95 cents. And just going for three victories in a row. Won that one by three. You know, widening lengths. I just thought Darwish is the one to beat in here. A Grant Togushi, Togoshi on my ticket. And the horse you have on top, I, I, I also did that. This is where I singled. So mm -hmm. Royalty Salvatore might be the one that's going to beat me. I hope, well, I don't, I hate seeing you get beat, <laughs> right? Especially if your Rainbow Six is live and right. you get a little lucky with your long shot earlier right. in the sequence in Rahi Momenta. But as I said, Elizabeth picking up a couple of wins in back to back fashion here last week and at good prices. And the fact that this horse is back, A on his preferred surface, and I'm giving him a pass. He had a low percentage rider aboard in his last start on the dirt. No one was beating Magnifier, who just wired that field off the claim for trainer Danny Gargan. And the good royalty Salvatore is more than good enough to run with the likes of Grant Tagoshi and the seven Darwish. So I'm going to take him for the mild, mild upset over Darwish, who clearly is well drawn and the horse to beat there for Mr. Zerpa. One more to bring you, race number 10, as we cap this uh, Twilight Friday on the turf with a $12,500 maiden claimer. number of these horses in the field have had repeated chances to break their maidens and most off that are just basically going to default into the direction of the second time starting Gorbachev who I want to see if he maybe has a bit of a, a mark like heart to heart has I'm wondering where the name came from but he's taking a big drop second out and ran okay first time out let's bring you the race back uh, towards the tail end of the championship meet geez this race was uh, about a week before audible's win in the <laughs> florida derby and and gorbachev broke fine from the inside post but winds up in just that no man's land right. where he's being asked to run from the rail you got to get position you got to go forward but he's not quick enough to make the lead and you're running at full speed just to keep your position before they enter the far turn and horses need a good two to three feet when they enter the turn to switch leads and he just wound up in a very uncomfortable spot and you get a sense that perhaps he wasn't all that comfortable down there never really kicked on in the stretch. He was very much one-paced, and watching the remainder of that race, I just wrote no response and no punch. But you, you, I, clearly, this is a horse that Joe Orsino is saying, look, we think he belongs for 12-5. We just want to win. Maybe he gets claimed. He just looks properly but also aggressively spotted the win in the last. Yeah, and he's listed as a gelding now, so they uh, did a couple of changes for this horse. He, as we mentioned, free-falling to the 12-5 level. I mentioned I used one other hit ticket on my Rainbow Six, and that was the four Warpipe. Solid in defeat when he turned back to this distance, finished third. Monty Thomas, his journeyman, Eduardo Nunez, penciled in for the return riding assignment. Just thought this ro horse ran okay enough for me to add it to the ticket, just in case Joe Gorbachev, the wheels have come off or something like All that. Right. Right, so we are inside, my friend, 35 minutes to race number one on a Twilight Friday where we have Tudor in race number two, Gunnavere returning in race number four, and we go up in class for the time being as we bring on track announcer Pete Aiello for those Friday scratches and changes. A passion for horses and a commitment to breed champions is the foundation of Hardacre Farm. Founded by Amy Tarrant, owner breeder and trainer, Hardacre Farm based in Ocala continues its tradition of success. From the Breeders' Cup to Gulfstream Park, Hardacre Farm. From the breeding shed to the racetrack. In pursuit of producing the best.